Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Access the Animus. Some months ago, as you might remember, we managed to decipher the Isu language of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and on the wave of enthusiasm we decided to approach the Vinland arc of the game and its, as far as we know, untranslated Mohawk dialogues. We worked on it for a number of weeks and we managed to translate some of the words on screen but at some point we had to admit our defeat. As a lot of you kept sending messages about the native text in the game though, we also felt like we really wanted to understand what it meant and as such we decided to look for someone who could really help us. So, as you do, we reached out to the Kanyenkehaga Onknagwenna Rautyotkwa Language and Cultural Center located in Kanawake, south of Montreal, Canada, and after some very embarrassing misspellings of their names, they helped us translating the few lines that can be found in the game, so, at last, the translation is here for you to enjoy. In the video, we will show you the story told in front of the fireplace at the end of the villain arc and its relation to something we have already seen in Assassin's Creed Rogue. Plus, we will go over the various sentences you can listen to while walking in the main village of the villain map and even the names of the weapons and gear you can buy from its shop. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking it, subscribing to our channel and turning the notifications on so you won't miss any of our future updates. And with that out of the way, let's jump in the second untranslated language of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So how will we do this this time? Apart from trying our best at pronouncing Mohawk names and failing, we will introduce you to the various sections where you can hear the Mohawk language in the Vinland arc, in case you don't remember them from the game, and we will let them flow with the translation on screen. After that we will give you a bit of a context to them, especially for what concerns the fireplace scene because some of those story elements need to be explained a bit more, and, as we said, we're going to discuss the connection to Assassin's Creed Rogue. Without any further ado then, let's start from the very beginning, the moment Eivor arrives to the Karanyan Kenyale village and hears people talking while she walks through the huts. <laughs> Show me. Oh, Nia Wahaje. Oh, ya young way, ya gaa, take another day. When they say another stranger, they are referring to the fact that in their village there is also Olaf, the man that Eivor is searching for at the beginning of this narrative arc. He was in fact already trading with the Kanyankahaga people before his fight with Gorm. Hail, friends. Do you... Do we... do we understand one another? Oya, kanya tera keronu. Jok no hoda tiga de giga yungwe. Do any of you speak Norse or Saxon? Zaza de gwat giga yungwe, yate de wayanderi. Yate yungwe yehri ze onanzini todit ni gunra di hantos ne gaa. Giga o zidaa, wa o nazi ne giga yungwe. Tigade nat ne e. This is Sunan. Her name means insight. Yanja dahawe giga, zinue oya ganyatara keronu itres. Danu ahinasku. Ahoya dagenha toka ahuna darohage giga. The literal translation of the last part of this sentence, as provided by the cultural center, reads and will give him an animal. As it doesn't seem to fit this context, we decided to interpret it as I'll bring him or her to the other man coming from the sea that lives in the village and will give him or her to him, with the meaning of leaving Eivor alone with Olaf. So, as you can see, both of the Mohawk characters act quite distrustfully while Eivor approaches them, because they have already experienced in the past the destructive behavior of what they will later call the White Man. Waterfalls are places of power in the old sagas. 
Giga oya ganyatera keheronu rodaska. Gods, never have I seen such a place. Quiet, and not a stone building inside. There is a language I know well, but the words are mind sick. Zatunde gantiga, rojadatku, zatsetsant doga askweni. This is the only sentence we really had to interpret to give it a meaning. The literal translation we received from the cultural center is Did you hear that? He is a witch. Get rid of him if you can before he brings it here. As shown a few seconds before this sentence, Eivor is saying that the words pronounced by Olaf are mind sick and we think that Konwahawishan is then referring to that too. She asks Eivor if she is hearing those words, then she probably refers to Olaf with he is a witch that we could interpret as he is mad or he is cursed or something similar. The last part could be a sort of advice for Eivor with the meaning of don't let his madness get to you so leave him as soon as you can. This is how the sentence should read if our assumptions are correct. Next we have the equipment, and in this case it's kind of self-explanatory as the translation brings us the name of the various objects. So we have the raven equipment set, the porcupine spear, the antler's bow and the bear club. This scene is triggered when the player dies for the first time in Finland. All over. I thought I was dead. <laughs> Doga on Saya ge gigon, on the wat zeruna te tizarun hyagon. Saya. You want me to. to eat these? Garhagwegun yo da hyuni ne gantni wa hyodons. What follows is a mission you start by finding Konwaha Wishin while she is fishing in the river. The leader of the village. They catch lake fish with a harpoon here. Interesting. What is she doing? Atsqui Gatnardaga. Deza do Hunsoni ga ne askatne ayejanitsa dorda de. Chegayerdi, the Nigu Waganawi Negadzu, Segu de Wagadu Hunsoni. And Ezu di Yoyanerde, Segu de Yonja du Hunsoni Negadzu. I can find more if you like. Add one more to the catch. Ya chegayerdi, the nigu waganawi negadzu. Segu de wagadu hunsoni. Gafnardaga. Ya aguestet gayerdi, zini sherha. Nek zi yo yanerde, zini yo ziwezanawe.
be enough to feed the entire village. Ha! There's a sturdy ha! Ti Denise, sir, Tiga Oquardi. The bear has been drawn out by the catch. Desta! What's Uncle Nerdy Diana Oquardi? Bear, it's no simple threat. I should follow her. Oh no, what gun hooder that name? Ransa Nascos. Nyawa, see what's Jena what ze, Gothner Daga. Aunt Geh Warda Serduni, Giga Okwardi, Danukazu. Zokki, a wadu yasawe neganadagu. Ah, Gahnardaga. Ya desanasquas ne okwardi. Dano yunjat dum haharde. I suspect you were expecting that fight. I'll leave you to your tasks. Zokki, rarondunde wasago horori ne yotzi zizu. Waharu, how, toyedene, zinu ero discarda gete, junk quiro tapwani. Dehni zaruki, totni dakwe. Ya dehni ganare, zio sumwaya, danu akwegu, gasumwa hunzi. Yot zi zizu, yagoda dene gwa the wagu, danu rarondo de, yasunne, irde de. Zokki, o sumagu, ya untke doda, ahyarek, dogatka negre. Tu da ya wasi, rarondo de, ya sagorege. O sumagu, ya eant dat ne, ne yot zi zizu. Zi wa agoyant dat haje, wa e na hadu, zi na hoda wa ekweni. Nia de gahderege. Ya ehoe, zi ya eant dat ne, zi da jutsun wagard us. Gods, Gahnardaga, dag wa gara du has. I do not understand. Ah, oh, oh, you want me to tell a story? All right, let me think. That we should fight against this view, for it is deeply unwelcome. Angwa gara duha se ne at nowara rao gara. Ne ne o niot ti wata det nowia ge. Gorum brought this stone across the whale road for a strange purpose. I do not know why. But it seems to belong to this land. Yes, gods. Gwa, ras nu sage wat ni dahre. Dagwa weird it go? Take it and guard it. Maybe that one day you will know its purpose. Thank you, each of you, for all you have done. Aya watski, yeti sot hagun gaha, aye zahara da, gahnaraga. This is a very interesting part, because for the second time in an Assassin's Creed game, we are witnessing the Iroquois creation myth. In fact, we have already seen a similar but different tale in Assassin's Creed Rogue through the cave painting collectibles. In the tale we see in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Yotsitsi Su, which means Sky Woman, lives in the sky and her husband, named Rarontode, gets to know that she is pregnant of a baby from another man. This is why in the translated version we see her holding her belly as she is carrying a baby. 
Laurent Taudet, though, being furious about the betrayal, calls her to the sacred tree of their world, and when they reach it, they find a big hole in its place as it has been uprooted. Yotsisi Su then looks through the hole and Laurent Taudet pushes her, making her fall in the world below. As she falls, she manages to grab some of the roots of the tree. So what we see in the game is the very first part of a Iroquois creation story, while after Eivor finishes her own story about Loki and Baldur, we see Karunyak Tatye, the other Mohawk character met by Eivor at the beginning of the arc, saying that he is going to tell a story about a big turtle and that should be the continuation of the Iroquois creation myth. In fact, after falling from the sky, Yotsitsi Su is grabbed from the birds of the world below. They make her land on a big turtle where she will use the roots of the sacred tree to create life and the world as we know it. As we mentioned before, Yotsitsi Su, or better, the Sky Woman, is a name we already know from Assassin's Creed Rogue. The story we are provided in Rogue, though, differs a bit from what we see in Valhalla, and that is because in the Iroquois lands there were different tribes and they had different versions of the creation myth. In Valhalla, we are in front of the Mohawk version of the story, while in Rogue the version is the one coming from the Oneida tribe, which was actually mentioned and featured in the game. In the Oneida's version, the Sky Woman descended on the Earth to bring order and light to what was a dark and chaotic world, as suggested by her father, the Great Spirit. If you are curious to read the whole text of the Oneida's version, as it appeared in Assassin's Creed Rogue, we will leave a link to its transcript from our website in the description. In both versions though, the Sky Woman gives birth to a daughter who gets pregnant too and gives birth to two twins. The twins in some of the Iroquois traditions personify good and evil, while in some other versions of said tradition they have a brother's relationship of rivalry rather than enmity. We honestly can't see any relation between the Iroquois mythology and the Norse one apart from the big sacred tree, and in general the story told by the fireplace seems to have been featured to reference the Mohawk culture. As the story told by Eivor in the same scene about Loki, Odin and Baldur did find the corresponding one in the first civilization narrative, do you think that the Mohawk creation myth as told in the Assassin's Creed games could have a counterpart in the Isu lore as well? Let us know in the comments. Going back to Valhalla and its Finland arc, we see Eivor talking about the crystal ball she stole from Gorm and giving it to the Kanyankahaga people, that react saying it's like the moon at Eivor's fingertips, which is a very nice way to describe the crystal ball, especially from the perspective of someone who has never seen a piece of Eden. Just as a little curiosity, and as we mentioned in episode 6 of our analysis of the game and its context, the crystal ball we see here is the same one we get to see in a few occasions during Assassin's Creed 3, showing that this scene is the reason why, almost a thousand years later, Connor was able to interact with Juno and embark on his quest. And that's it for today's video. Did you expect anything different from the untranslated sentences in the game? Do you think the Mohawk creation story will have an impact on the Isu events we are going to experience in the future games? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we'd really like to thank the Kanyenkehaga Ongnawenna Rautitiokwa Language and Cultural Center for the help on this one. In case you'd like to know more about the Mohawk culture, we really suggest you check their website, which you can find in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.